It's the guy who's willing to die who's gonna win that itch. And I know if I'm gonna have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. Because that's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now I can't make you do it. You gotta look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now I think you're gonna see a guy who will go that inch with you. Hell yeah. You're gonna see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're gonna do the same for him. But that's the team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. That's football, guys. That's all it is. And welcome, everyone, to the Outsiders Podcast. Clint Switzer, Noah Groninger here. Very special show. NFL getting ready to get underway. Chiefs and Jaguars this Sunday, and we have a very special guest getting ready to preview the Jacksonville Jaguars with us today, Noah. Yes, Jaguars beat writer from the Florida Times Union, Ryan O'Halloran, is going to join us to break down this game. Talking all things Jaguars and Chiefs, the marquee matchup in the NFL, obviously, two, two and 14 teams from a year ago, uh, getting ready to absolutely collide this Sunday in Jacksonville. It's going to be absolutely scorching hot. The Jaguars, I'm assuming, will probably be in all white. The Chiefs never play well in the state of Florida, but this is a better Chiefs team on the field then Jacksonville Sunday. How does this thing play out, Noah? Well, uh, they've got Blaine Gabbert starting, maybe. Uh, he's got the broken thumb, so it could be Chad Henney, uh, which could be problems for the Kansas City Chiefs because I think Chad Henney is the better quarterback. Yeah, definitely. Blaine Gabbert's a guy who he did a, he did look okay in the preseason. He does have the injury. He's a guy who just has not come along to expectation. Now, Jacksonville has not put a good team around him. This is a very poor Jacksonville team. A lot of people consider this, along with maybe Oakland, and you mentioned the Jets earlier, some uh, three of the worst teams in the league. And I think Jacksonville is going to be right there vying for that uh, number one spot come April. Yeah, they could get lucky, get Teddy Bridgewater out of it. And uh, they got Luke Jokel there. Um, Maurice Jones-Drew is always an issue. Uh, Justin Blackman suspended the first four games, so the Chiefs get off easy there, uh, having to guard Cecil Shorts the third and Ace Sanders. I, I, Ace Sanders, I think, though, you know, the, uh, from South Carolina, that's a guy that can get he, – he's very quick, can cause a lot of problems. He's maybe the way – you know, we, we, the Chiefs like to talk about Dexter McCluster and a spiel. That's a speed guy. Ace Sanders is a flat speed guy, flat line running. That's his thing. And Sean Smith may have a problem with that being a bigger corner. Uh, Ace Sanders could juke him, could make some moves and get off the line and – Make some well, plays. Did, did the Chiefs win this game? Because uh, a lot of people in Kansas City talking like, this is just a pushover. Jacksonville's horrible. We go in there and win. I say this is going to be an absolute war and not the pretty kind. I think the Chiefs win this game something like 17-14 to 14 or something like that, and it's just not going to look pretty. I've got it 23-16, to 16, Kansas City. Not a not a good game to watch at all. Maurice Jones, Drew, is going to get in the end zone. Going to see a lot of field goals from Suck Up. And uh, Josh Scobie going through. Alex Smith doesn't make mistakes. I think the Chiefs win this game. If Alex Smith, you know, throws his 10-yard patterns. Uh, 10 get, yards? That's pretty far for is. Alex Smith. It really is. But let's keep it Let's keep it reasonable. <laughs> I think, I think 10 yards and in. Uh, you know, you get Jamal Charles going. You get maybe Niall Davis. I don't know about going because as a running back so far in the preseason, I haven't really liked what I've seen from, from you know, from Niall. But I also, the offensive line scares me. This is a young offensive line. I think I, the youngest in the league. Uh, so we're going to see how that plays out. A rookie starting, you know, at tackle in Eric Fisher. A lot of question marks for both teams. I, you know, I just think the Chiefs are the better team. I think they're going to come out on top. We'll see what Ryan O'Halloran thinks because, you know, the perception in Jacksonville. I want to see if it's the same as it is league wide. Is this perceived in Jacksonville as the worst team in the league? Are they just trying to get through the season, or do they have some expectation? Because sometimes from city to city, expectations change. So we'll see how Brian O'Halloran thinks of this year's Jacksonville Jaguars and this game versus the Chiefs on Sunday. And we are breaking down this Sunday's Chiefs-Jaguars game with the beat writer from the Florida Times Union from the Jacksonville Jaguars, Ryan O'Halloran. Ryan, welcome to the show. We got two and 14 teams from a year ago getting ready to go at it. I imagine the fever pitch is at an absolute high there in Jacksonville for this game. I, mean, I don't know about you guys. I haven't been able to sleep in a week. Oh, Absolutely. But, I mean, like you said, it's, there is a fever because 
it, the team that they're playing is 2-14, and 14, so something's got to give. Somebody's going to get off to a better start than they did last year, and somebody will have momentum going into the second week of the season, and neither team had any kind of momentum at all last year. Well, as we look at this, I want to get kind of gauge the way things are kind of being perceived down in Jacksonville. Uh, and for one, did the preseason, did it change anyone's feelings or expectations as far as this team? Of course, we hear from a lot of national pundits that this is just the worst team in the league and just, just dish it out. They're 2-14 and 14 again. It, has, is that kind of the case down there in Jacksonville, or has uh, anything in the preseason changed that perception? Well, I think, I think the perception in town is that they may not win a lot of games, but they're at least going to be more exciting because last year they're that lethal combo. They stunk and they're boring. Offensively, they showed that they could be functional with an up-tempo style, get it to their playmakers. A. Sanders, Dallas Robinson are rookies who can make an impact. On defense, it seems like they'll stop the run better, but there's more questions on defense and offense. But there's definitely a better there's a better vibe around town in terms of this. They just like this team better than they did last year. Uh, speaking about having more questions on defense, uh, going to your secondary, you've got uh, Dwayne Gratz, Demetrius McRae, uh Joseph Cyprian, uh, Jonathan Cyprian, and Alan Ball. I mean, what's going on with the, that secondary? Well, it's, it's being revamped. Um, you know, Karatz is, is a third-round pick. He'll start. Uh, Alan Ball has only started once or twice in his career. He's been brought on to start a corner. And Cyprian's second-round pick starts at Strong State. And then Dwight Lowry, the veteran presence at pre-safety. So they, they made a concerted effort in draft using five of their five of their picks on defensive backs. And they they got to get younger, they got to get faster, and they got to get bigger because of the te- coverage techniques that Gus Bradley wants to use. They've accomplished that. It remains to be seen whether they'll actually be better. How short do you think the leash is going to be this year on Blaine Gabbard? Of course, this is a kid we've covered here as we're in Kansas City as uh, as he spent time here at the University of Missouri. Uh, how short do you think his leash is going to be? And uh, you know, how do you feel like how he's going to have to play? You know, to keep that job. Well, his status for week one is in doubt because of the broken thumb, but assuming he starts, the general feeling is that he'll get the first half of the year. The schedule is really tough. He won't have Justin Blackman for the first four games. You know, get, get him eight games to see if he can prove he can be the guy for the rest of the year. So they're not going to, I mean, they realize this is a rebuilding year. They're not going to make any panic decisions at quarterback three games in the season. Who's going to be that number two receiver since Justin Blackman is suspended for the first four games? Is it Mike Brown or is it Ace Sanders? It's going to be Ace. Um, he's, he's, Judge Fish, the offensive coordinator, told me today that he's, he's been the surprise of camp from an offensive perspective. They knew he could return punts and they knew he was, he was shifty and fast. They didn't realize how polished he was as a route runner. So Ace will start and then a three wide receiver. Mike uh, Brown will be the, the slot guy. Uh, how has Luke Jokel looked, and what do you think they're going to do uh, this Sunday with him going up against Justin Houston? Are they going to help him with uh, running backs chipping, or are they going to just leave him out there one-on-one against Justin? Well, judging by the preseason, he, was, he, had, he had a solid preseason. He overcame a hip flexor problem that cost him a game. And they didn't give him a lot of help in pass protection, so I'm sure they'll maybe mix some things up with their protection scheme. But, you know, they're, they're going to... They're, they're going to trust that he can handle guys one-on-one and make, you know, and if the Chiefs have success, then they'll move forward from there with, with giving him help. But, you know, this, this is why they drafted him and moved him right tackle is that he can handle this kind of stuff by himself. A lot of people in Kansas City look at uh, the Chiefs with the revamped roster and a new regime. Andy Reid comes in here, new quarterback, and Alex Smith. Uh, but the team was still 2-14 and 14 a year ago, although a lot of people around here are thinking, well, you waltz into Jacksonville, that that's a win. The Kansas City Chiefs have not, you know, historically played well in Jacksonville. And what is the sense around around your city? Do, do people think, oh well, Kansas City's coming in here? Are they thinking the same thing as us? Hey, Kansas City's coming in here. Here's our chance for a win. I mean, what what's the perception down there? Um, it's realistic. They they probably, they realize that Kansas City has a better quarterback. They're probably more better, you know, more talent up and down the roster. So it's almost to the point now. That the Jaguars were so awful at home last year. They almost want to first see them be competitive, and if they win the game, that's a bonus. So. They had realistic expectations, and so by no means did I say, hey, show up and win because this team isn't good enough to do that, and the fans know it. What do you think we're going to see out of Denard Robinson? He's listed at quarterback, wide receiver, and running back on your guys' depth chart. Uh, are we going to see some trick plays out there this Sunday? Um, maybe not trick plays, but he def- I, would be, I would expect a little bit of a wildcat package. Um, if I was a Jaguars, I wouldn't let him throw the ball. Anywhere, just as it works so far. But the thing that Denard has done well at, which has been a surprise, is he's 
struck between the tackles really well as a tailback. So, you know, look for that. He's been able to keep balls forward and get yards. So if, if you had to pick all those positions, I'd say the most likely he makes an impact is that, is that tailback. How important is Maurice Jones-Drew to this offense? And I know that's sort of a rhetorical question given his productivity, you know, over the years there in Jacksonville. But with, you know, an inexperienced, inexperi- an I guess you could say, quarterback in Gabbard, an unproven quarterback in Blaine Gabbard, uh, just how much pressure is on him this year to, to lead that offense? Well, I mean, it's, it, you know, Maurice's presence is vital. Uh, he held out last year in camp, played a couple of games and got hurt. It was done. And the season was done. They couldn't run it. They couldn't pass it. They couldn't score. So, you know, what Maurice does, he keeps offenses on schedule. He gets them five, six yards on first down. That sets up your play action. That sets up your, you know, take a couple shots on second and short. So a healthy Maurice Jones Drew is, is going to help Blaine Gabbert be successful. So, you know, Maurice has had a great camp. Didn't get a lot of carries, but did a lot, doesn't need a lot. But, you know, you don't want to say as, this, as Maurice goes, as offense goes, but he's definitely important. What about Ricky Stanzi? He comes over from the the Kansas City Chiefs. He's the Jaguars' third quarterback. To, were the Jaguars really interested in him, or did they kind of bring him in for a few uh, secrets? <laughs> well, 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 no, well, no. Next week, if he's still here, but um, I mean, they cut two quarterbacks last week to make room for him. And you know, when they first claimed him, he was the fifth quarterback. And they say, oh, yeah, he'll just keep him through the weekend and you know get some intelligence out of him and then move on. But he was taking a lot of he was taking a lot of reps today with the scout team. So I mean, you never want to see a guy that's here to stay for a while, but it just would seem a little, little more shadier than normal in the NFL if, that, if that's exactly what they're doing. And guys, we're talking to Ryan O'Halloran from the Florida Times Union. Uh, Ryan, before we let you go, we got to ask you: the new Jaguars uniforms are getting you know mixed reviews all over the league. A lot of people like the uniform, hate the helmet. What are your thoughts on these uniforms? Because they they've already caused a big splash. Well, it's funny that, you know, after watching them in practice for about that half, you don't even notice the two-tone helmet. So, you, know, you remove that. Um, they're going to be wearing white on white uh, for the game this week because it's roughly going to be 982 degrees here. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the white on white will work. But, I mean, I'm not a big uniform guy, but they seem to be selling well around town. And that's the most important thing, right? Definitely. Uh I wanted to ask you about Jason Babin, how he looked uh, during the preseason, and uh, just his matchup against Eric Fisher seems like a positive for Jason Babin uh, going up against a rookie from Central Michigan. Well, you would think. Uh, I mean, Babin didn't have a great camp, though. He didn't do a lot in the preseason, and, and they're, they're, they need him to do something because this is the team that finished last in, in the league in sack last year, just 20. So, you know, if he can get going, you know, the big thing is they got to stop the run to put him in pass rushing situations. That he can take, you know, take that wide nine uh, stance, you know, further off the tackle and try to get around Fisher. But you know, they they need to do. That. They may have to send pressure to get pass rush because the format rush hasn't gotten it done in the preseason. All right, Ryan, we're going to put your feet to the fire before we let you go. Who wins the game and what's the score? I'm going to pick uh, Kansas City. And I'll say uh, 24-20, and. Uh, That'll be uh, one for the Chiefs, one for the Jags. Ooh, just barely covering the spread. That might me. That may have me rethinking my Vegas plans for the weekend. Ryan, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Great insight on all things Jaguars, and uh, we'll definitely catch up down the road. Hopefully, after both of our squads uh, getting some wins here. Okay, anytime, guys. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate it. Big thanks to Ryan O'Halloran who joins us from the Florida Times Union. Great stuff breaking down this game. He's got the Chiefs winning, and I guess we agree on that. Yeah, they've got a rough secondary there with Allen Ball as their number one guy. Uh, they've got Dwayne Garotz, a third-round pick, Jonathan Cyprian, their second-round pick. Dwight Lowry comes over, the uh, veteran presence at free safety for them. He comes over from the Jets, uh, so he should be able to throw the ball uh, a little bit. Dwayne Bowe should be able to get open easily. Anthony Fasano, some checkdowns as usual. We love those. Oh, yeah, 10 yards and in. Let's make sure we do that. Now, does, did anything surprise you? from the final 53 roster that Kansas City unveiled because I think there was a few surprises in there. Uh, you know, there's a lot of new names, a lot of new faces. The roster is turned over. Uh, anything stand out to you? Um, I was surprised they cut Zach Dials after a few days. He made the final 53, but then they cut him a few days later uh, to bring in James Michael Johnson from the Browns. And uh, Desmond Moses comes over after we traded Edgar Jones. Um, so that was a surprise. Uh, letting go of Devin Wiley. Uh, I thought they'd give him a chance, round pick, yeah. but uh, Andy Reid goes with Chad Hall from San Francisco, also from Philadelphia during Andy Reid's time. We've seen the preseason. We saw 
We saw the quarterback play. We saw the offensive line. We saw in spurts. We saw each unit up close and personal. Does this change your expectation? Because a lot of people talked about, you know, eight and eight, possibly contending for a playoff spot. Where are you at with that right now? I see the ceiling at seven and nine. I do not like this team. I don't like Alex Smith. I've made that uh, very well known. Uh, I see a lot of of, uh, Matt Castle in him uh, having trouble throwing the deep ball, no accuracy, out of bounds, uh, lots of check downs. Third and 10, you can expect him to throw a two-yard out pass to Anthony Fasano, who just gets pushed out of bounds, and we're punting. So, I agree. I think that the, the ceiling for this team is a little higher, maybe you know eight or nine wins, and we're, ta- we're saying the same thing basically here. Um, I do think that depending on what happens in this division, you, you kind of have to play with what's happening around you as well. Uh, the Chiefs get lucky, get through it injury-free. You just got to take your chances. I mean, this is a manageable schedule. You say that, but what's, I mean, the, in the NFL, you play your schedule. It is what it is. You don't know how it's going to be. You look, you look at it right now. It changes uh, week to week. So I don't know. I think this team could be, you know, an eight, nine win team, but realistically, I'm just going to say eight and eight. I know that's kind of a cop out, but we'll say eight and eight, but winning this game here in Jacksonville and uh, starting the season off with some momentum because six out of the last seven seasons, Noah, the Chiefs have started out with at least an 0 and 2 start. And if you think this game's going to be easy, nope. think again. Nope. Maurice Jones drew Cecil Shorts. Remember that name. He will break free, break open, break deep, break off, and, and he will catch a deep pass. Guys, we'll talk to you post game after Chiefs and Jaguars uh, this weekend. Hopefully, talking about a victory. Can't guarantee one because, like we said, this is going to be a war. Chiefs fans, beware. We will talk to you guys next week. Clint Weiss and Noah Groninger, Outsiders Podcast. We appreciate you guys joining us. Appreciate Ryan O'Halloran joining us from the Florida Times Union.